Before you can do anything to the floor pans, you're going to have to take the seats out of the car. Now, these 67 and older ones like this here, you just pull the lever over, scoot the seat all the way forward. But they don't always scoot that easy, so let me scoot this back again here, and I'll show you what you can do when they get stuck. You get out of the car. Now, yeah. Wade will show you how to take that back seat out. Okay, lift it up off the lip that it sets on, pull it forward a little bit, then pull up on the back of the seat. So you get it straight up, then turn it at an angle, push it back up into that corner, then you can just slide it right out the door. Now we just lift up the lift that the seat sets on. Just take the little 10 millimeter nuts that hold it down. Now that you know how floor. to get down to your bare floorboard, we're going to move over to this chassis and we're going to show you how to fix that hole under the battery on this chassis. Now this right here is a typical, it's cut out all the bad metal here and we're going to replace it with one of these repair panels that you can buy. And so we'll end up with a nice soft. Now I'll show you what kind of tools we have that we can cut this out with. There are several different tools, so you can take your choice. Now you can see we have a whole array of tools here, and I'll show you how each one of these tools can be used for cutting that hole. But one of the most important pieces of equipment you can have is a pair of safety glasses and a pair of gloves. Also buy plenty of them, and when you buy them, buy real good ones. Once the wheels get down pretty small, I usually try to save the, the little ones for tight spots. You can remove the guard off of it, and you can get into some tight corners. You can and buy places. for about a dollar or so. You can use your electric drill and get a wire brush that'll work in your electric drill, clean it off around the edge. Or if you've got the Tim Allen philosophy where you want more power, you can get one of these four and a half inch grinders like this. And you can even buy these pretty reasonably priced anymore. And you can get a wire brush like this here to use and really make pretty short work. And it's like a reusable pop rivet. You have a tool like this here that pushes this little pin out. You drill an eighth inch hole, you push that down into the hole, and then when you release it, it pulls the two pieces of metal tightly together and that holds the sheet metal down. There's several of these here you can put all the way around the pan. We'll be using these here so you'll be able to see how they work. When you get done, you can just pull them back out and use them again another time. They're real handy when you're doing sheet metal work. We'll show you how those work. I'll be putting a few of these in now while my son Chad, who's been welding since he's about 11 or 12 years old, will show you some of the basics in welding. When my dad first explained to me what was all involved in welding, because it sounded kind of hard and complex, I was somewhat intimidated and reluctant to try it for the first time. But I soon found, as you will, that learning the basics of welding isn't as hard as it might sound, and it was actually kind of fun. Something else I found is that being able to weld has almost no limit to its usefulness. These two kinds of welders we'll be discussing both use an electric current that makes the heat that melts the metal together. The current travels through these wires. One goes to a clamp that goes onto your work, and the other wire goes to the end you will be using the weld. The more current or amps that the welder is able to put out, the thicker metal you will be able to weld. Now, if you are looking to buy a welder, something else you might want to take note of is what's called its duty cycle. And that describes how many minutes out of a 10 minute time period you can weld with the welder set at its highest setting without overheating it. A duty cycle rating of 20% would mean that you could weld for 2 minutes straight and then you would have to let it cool off for 8 minutes. Now what we're going to be doing is just spot welding. Since we're only welding for short periods of time, we're not going to have that much of a concern of it overheating. Now I have a couple of pieces of metal here that we're going to be welding together. Now one piece is a little bit thicker than the other piece, which is what you're going to be running into whenever you are replacing or repairing your floor. Now the first welder we're going to be showing is the MIG welder or wire feed welder as it's also called. It's the best for welding sheet metal because... Now this next welder is almost the same as the last one. 
Well, when we've got this one set up to use what's called flux cord wire. And when you weld, this wire gives off its own shielding gas, and it takes the place of the designed for welding thinner materials, and it runs on a 110 volt house current. And you'll still probably find the stitch welder useful for welding, even with this smaller welder, because the diode can be bypassed, allowing the full current to go through it, and the vibrations of the solenoid still make it much easier to start an arc. Now I hope we've taken some of the mystery out of welding. As you can see, learning the basics isn't really as hard as it could sound. In fact, to show you that it doesn't really take a whole lot of practice, I'd like to ask my 13-year-old sister, Holly, to try out a couple of the welders. Care to give it a shot? Sure. I've only learned this in the past week, so I'm not going to make any promises, though. Good job, Holly. Thanks. See these two welds she just did will do an excellent job of holding the metal together. Okay, we'll get the last of our little removable fasteners out of here. And we'll be ready for our next big step. And that's putting the seam sealer around the edge of this. Now this is an area where you don't want to be trying to save money. You want to use a good automotive seam sealer. Something that will stick real well to the metal the 67 now. That's the one we're going to take the body off of and Wade will show you how to take the body off of that and then we'll replace the whole. As you can see there's four bolts, two on either side of the tunnel and if you've got the voltage regulator inside like this one you're going to want to unhook the wires that come from the And once you got that clipped off just pull your line loose from the other fuel line that runs through the more chassis. bolts. Nine thirteen millimeter and two seventeen that run along the outside lip of the floor pan on each side. While I'm taking these out, my dad's going to show you what we're going to be setting this by. Okay, you can see what we've built for ourselves here is a couple of giant sawhorses. Now we've built these out of four by four pressure treated uh, posts, eight feet long. It took three posts to build each one of these. This is eight feet wide this way. Each of these posts here are about Real three and a half. Then we can go ahead and let it down and roll it out. Okay, wait, I'll push it out from this end. You pull it out from the other end. Looking at the bottom of our new pan, it looks like the only problem we're going to have is that there's one of the nuts that runs across the back here is in this brace and it's in the pan as well. And it looks like the simplest solution to that problem is just cut our brace off here just on the other side of the nut right there. And then I think the rest of this brace will fit up inside the pan. We'll drill a couple of holes. Okay, we can see Chad's done a real nice job of welding our pan back onto our chassis. It's on there nice and solid, just like it was when it was brand new. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is cover over the weld and the seam with our seam seal. Now as soon as we get both of these in, we can undo our safety chains, jack the car up just a little bit more, pull out our sawhorse, and set our car back down. And we'll be ready to bring in our super beetle, and we'll show you how to take the body off of that. Caps in the back of our spare tire well here. There's thir two 13 millimeters. Hold the body to the chassis, and then under this big cap here, find a bolt that holds your steering damper in place. We're just going to take all these out. And we'll pull it out on our jack and show you the solution to that problem of the wheels wanting to go wherever they want. Rick, that looks great. It looks like you've saved another one. And if you apply the things you've learned in this video, you'll be able to save your bug too.